Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Tunja Chakma, and I want to talk about virtual reality and some new technologies in that area. Um, I'm sure everyone here uh, knows the famous holodeck from the science fiction series Star Trek. What happens in that room? The user enters an empty room and then with, with some strange walls and then the location, the environment changes into a total different location. And the user really thinks he is in another location. Um, you get immersed with your whole body into another world. What does it mean, immersion? Um, what is that for a state? How can we achieve that state? A state where you think that the computer-generated uh, environment is real. Every one of us perceives reality through our sense organs. So uh, a subtle interaction of signals to our brain and from our brain describes our being in reality. For a full immersion into other places, into other virtual realities, we have to trick these sense organs in a way so that the brain thinks these simulated signals are real signals. Some of these sense organs are more important for the immersion than others, so I won't talk about every of them. When we look closer to the signal flow between our environment and the human brain, we realize that we mostly uh, send physical movements as input to the environment. And the output from the world around us is, is mostly uh, light signals, sound signals, or physical signals. All this happens very fast, with a low latency. This is very important. When you want to have a good immersion, all this has to be uh, happen very fast. And what is fast? Can we measure that? John Carmack, the CTO of Oculus VR and the developer of Doom, once said, human sensory systems can detect very small relative delays in parts of the visual or especially audio fields. But when absolute delays are below approximately 20 milliseconds, they are generally imperceptible. Now back to the sense organs. Hearing. When the user hears the sound of an artificial environment, it is much easier for the brain to decouple. Just imagine the sound of water waves at the beach. I mean, without them, a beach wouldn't be a beach. Simulation of sound can be done by usual headphones or other sound systems. The next two senses are the kinesthetic sense and the sight. These two are mostly coupled to behold. The kinesthetic sense provides the brain with the information of the, of the relative position of the parts of the human body. So if you close your eyes and turn around your head, the kinesthetic sense tells the brain where your head is aiming. A head-mounted display with a head-tracking system can trick these senses. A device like the Oculus Rift, here a picture, uh, makes it possible to look around in virtual environments. Very important for the immersion is the field of view. So when the field of view is that high, so that the user don't see the borders of the screen anymore, uh, this uh, leads to a good immersion. Next sense is touching. When we grab an object, we feel the surface, we, we feel the weight of the object, and we also feel forces if we move it around. Uh, there is an interesting new device in the VR market called Reactive Grip. The Reactive Grip controller replicates motion force by moving slider plates on a grip handle. You can see them here. 
They can be moved up and down in the four sides. And there's also a finger-based system of this device. <coughs> Input and motion is tracked and the movement of the bars gives the player a sense of an object's weight. So with these devices, we can now hear, we can see, and we can feel virtual environments. Now, how can we bring our own movements, our own body, into the virtual world? With a depth sensing camera attached on a head-mounted display, uh, you can track your hand movements and send this information to the computer which uh, generates virtual hands in the environment. So, how can we get, your, get the whole body inside the virtual environment? Here you see me with a motion capture suit in the virtual reality laboratory of the University of Technology in Vienna. Uh, I have some infrared reflecting dots on my body uh, in the room, in the laboratory, are some cameras attached which detect these uh, dots. Uh, with this information, you can bring body movements into virtual environments. Uh, this system is uh, expensive, it's not user-friendly, but the precision is very high. That's why all the film studios use this kind of systems. Here is a picture of a motion capture suit called Prio VR. Uh, instead of cameras and dots, this suit uses inertial sensors all over the body. Uh, this is not expensive, it's much more user friendly, and there is no need of cameras in the room where you use it. Now, with all these interesting technologies, for virtual reality experience. There is, but there is still a big problem. How can you walk around in a virtual reality environment without tossing against your own four walls? Naturally walking is very important for the immersion and for a full virtual reality experience. It reduces cyber sickness, which comes from the discrepancy between the sight signals and the body signals when you, for example, sitting and pushing some buttons. And it dramatically enhances the immersion when you're walking inside. We from CyberRift have constructed a device which lets you walk freely in virtual reality environments with natural body movements. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present you the Virtualizer. The Virtualizer is the first omnidirectional treadmill with integrated sensors based on the low friction principle. This device allows the user to walk, to run, crouch, jump, turn around, walk in crouch positions, and all these movements get detected by a sensor, sensor system. The user is not changing his place in the real space while using this device. So how does it work? We have made several experiments with different materials to find the right friction coefficient between the, the base and the usual cotton socks. And we have found a material which has a friction coefficient on a level which is not too low and not too high. And this uh, level guarantees as much natural movements as possible. And using usual socks uh, leads to a very silent operation. So you can use this device in the flat without having problems with neighbors. So the user wears a belt system. This belt system is connected to the ring construction. And when the user wants to make a step, he slightly pushes against the ring construction. And while one foot is sliding back, the other foot is making a new step. The remaining force gets absorbed by the reconstruction. The only difference 
between walking in the real and walking in the virtualizer is that the zero point of the coordinate system of a movement, of a walking movement, is not in the, in the foot anymore, it is now in the hip. Sensors can, our sensors can detect these movements uh, statless. That means we can send this information to the virtual reality environment and you can walk or run and you have different speeds uh, in the virtual reality environment. The ring construction if, of the virtual is, is vertically movable. That allows the user to crouch and to jump. Our sensor system detects crouching and jumping also analog. And this is interesting because there, that means there is no more one crouch position on a button. And this is a huge enhancement for the immersion. You can crouch in every position. It is also possible to sit in the virtualizer. And this enhances the immersion while driving a car, flying a helicopter or in other situations where sitting is necessary. The virtualizer is also compatible with every game which uses keyboard input or controller input. The area of applications of the virtualizer. Virtual sightseeing. I, I strongly believe that someday uh, the whole planet will be able to exist as a 3D model. And just imagine, you jog at the Grand Canyons or you go to the pyramids of Egypt, there are no limits. New era of gaming. Gaming will never be the same again. You have much more fun and you do something for your health. I mean, that's a win-win situation. Training and education. With the right virtual reality software, you can train firefighters, you can train police officers, you can train employees for special situations. Um, or just imagine history, geography or geology lessons. And the students are directly at the locations of the subject. Psychological theory, anxiety management, is a very interesting area in VR. There are a lot of people with different phobia. So with the right software, these people can be confronted with their fears and, and learn how to handle it. Virtual meetings. People can meet each other on different locations for uh, social contacts, for business meetings, there are, there's no, there are no limits for this. I think it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> ah, okay. Architecture. An architect can visit his own creations before it was even built. He can get a feeling and an impression of his creation before it, uh, it really, really exists. You see the, the arrays of publications are limitless. Here's a short demo um, of the virtualizer in action. You see me driving a car, getting out of the car, walking around. Here a uh, scene from Skyrim, fighting against some spiders. This is a simulation. Uh, we want to show the different uh, crouching positions. This simulation accepts more crouching positions, and it is also possible to uh, use them with the virtualizer. And here is Carrie. She is in, alone in the rift with a herd monitor. And 
here again a scene from the game Armor Free. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you've enjoyed my talk.